Hello, and welcome to another episode of What's in the Warehouse. So for those of you that don't recognize me, my name is Gwen. I'm the COO of Dr. Judy Morgan's Naturally Healthy Pets. I also happen to be Dr. Judy's daughter. So I have been in the veterinary industry for a long time. Obviously, Dr. Judy's a veterinarian. My dad is also a veterinarian. They met in vet school. So I have done this a long time, but I officially am the COO of Naturally Healthy Pets. So I run a lot of the operations side of the business, which includes uh, managing our warehouse full of naturally healthy products. So if you're not familiar, everything we're going to talk about today is available at drjudymorgan.com. So you can go there and check out for more details. If I miss anything, each product will have more information on each product listing on the website. So make sure you double check there. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat and I'll try to answer some questions as I see them. But if I miss anything, look on the website. We've got tons of resources there. Okay, so today we are going to talk about supporting the wood element uh, because it's springtime and it's the season of wood. So for the beginning, to start off, for those of you that aren't as familiar with the five elements, it is based on traditional Chinese veterinary medicine theory. So today, um, when we're talking about the wood element, that's what we're talking about from a TCVM perspective. And that is one of Dr. Judy's areas of specialty. So that's why we talk about it quite often. And I wanted to start by just reading a little excerpt from her book, Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs. This is a great resource if you want want to learn more about nutrition, but specifically about TCVM food therapy and all of the energetics. It is a wonderful resource. I crack it open to answer people's questions all the time or to work with my own pets on whatever they're dealing with. You can get it on Amazon. You can also get it on drjudymorgan.com, but it's a wonderful resource getting on nutrition for dogs. Um, okay, so we are talking about the wood element today. These are often brown coated and multicolored pets. They are generally more yawn in nature. They tend to be dominant, lash out when things are not going their way, biting without provocation, and they can also be aggressive. These dogs or cats are confident, competitive. They make great working pets for hunting, agility, um, border Collies and Chesapeake Bay Retrievers are classic examples of this element. So the wood element is ruled by the liver, but that also includes the eyes because the um, liver is the window or the eyes are the window to the liver. <clears throat> So we'll talk about um, a lot of liver related things today. We'll also um, talk about in general things that are draining to the liver. So a lot of toxins, pesticides, uh, things that you find, medications, things that you find in the environment. And typically a lot of seizure problems are closely related to the liver. So this element uh, should always be supported in pets that are suffering from some type of seizure disorder. So when in balanced, the wood element uh, can have the following problems. So seizures, we just mentioned, any type of liver disease, gallbladder disease is very closely related to this. Aggression, we talked about that personality trait, uh, cracked, brittle, or broken nails, tendon tears, ligament tears, glaucoma, dry eye, conjunctivitis. So the main three things that we're really um, talking about when it comes to the wood element is going to be liver, eyes, and seizures. For this element, for the wood element, generally speaking, fresh green foods will feed this element. So um, we have asparagus, asparagus, dandelion greens, uh, chlorella and spirulina are great as well. Dandelion root, milk thistle, uh, like feeds like. So since we are talking a lot about the liver, any type of liver is helpful to feed. So chicken liver, lamb liver, beef liver, pork liver, all of those would be great if you can find venison liver. Um, I don't know if we have found that yet, but you just want to make sure that you're getting those from a really high quality source since the liver is the detoxifying organ in the body. Uh, it filters chemicals and heavy metals. So I didn't mention the, I'm not going to mention the heavy metal blend today from Solutions Pet Products, but that's also something to consider if you know your pet has been exposed to heavy metals or you just want to do a light little detox. That's another thing that could be helpful for this element as well. 
So all of that information was from one page in Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs. It goes into all five elements, personalities, foods that support each uh, element, as well as some things to avoid, some things that commonly plague them. All of that is in Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs. You can get it at drjudymorgan.com or on Amazon. So whether you think you have a pet that is a wood element pet based on the description uh, or you're not sure, definitely this is a wonderful resource for all pets. We all fit into those five different element categories. So your pet will be covered in this content if you decide to get the book. Okay. Oh, what's happening in the warehouse? Well, currently it's a very stormy, like drab day here in North Carolina. So it's quiet in the warehouse today, but okay. So now we're going to talk about physical products that support the wood element. And so in general, if you have a pet that you think is a wood element pet, we have the pet personality quiz online and it will also take you a step further to not only identify your pet's personality, but to see if there are any deficiencies or excesses that you may need to assist uh, assist with. And different food therapy principles apply based on what you're seeing, whether it's an excess or a deficiency. So we're going to scratch the surface a little bit today with some of those things. But if you want to know how to tailor it to your specific pet, the pet personality quiz would be a great resource that kind of walks you through identifying those things for your pet. Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about today, we had mentioned that a lot of these wood element pets are prone to tendon and ligament issues. I have a wood personality dog. She shredded her cruciate ligament when she turned two. Uh, so she really fit that stereotype exactly. And one thing that we really like to use for those pets is deer antler velvet. So this is just the life deer antler velvet and it's available at drjudymorgan.com. It's just capsules of deer antler velvet. It's actually a human grade product. So you can take this yourself if you're interested or uh, give it to your pets, cats or dogs. They can all benefit from this. And according to TCM, traditional Chinese medicine or veterinary medicine, um, the uh, deer antler velvet is very helpful specifically for the kidney and liver organs as well. So we use it a lot for joints and to support growth or to support some type of joint injury, like a, a cruciate tear or a ligament tear. Um, but specifically for our wood element pets, the deer antler velvet does target the kidney and liver organs, which is something we're also trying to support. So it makes sense that it's all interconnected with each other. That's the theme of today where everything connects back into itself. Uh, so if you have a wood element pet um, and maybe they're getting older or you notice they're having some joint issues specifically, the life deer antler velvet is just plain deer antler velvet, human grade. You can use that for your pets. You can use it for yourself. Uh, it's very helpful and supportive. Next, we're going to talk about two of Dr. Judy's constitutions. And so we have uh, two different types of these constitutions. So there are five constitutions based on the five elements. And what she did is from there, she developed two different things for each constitution. So we have whole, complete, and balanced diets for each constitution available only at allprovide.com. So these are actual meals you can feed to your dogs. And if you take the pet personality quiz, it will walk you through how to identify which diet best fits your pet's constitution. Uh, but the good news is they're all complete and balanced. You're not going to mess it up if you pick the wrong one or you want to try the wood constitution for your wood personality pet. Um, it's just a little bit, it gives you a little bit of a guide to start if you take the pet personality quiz, but you're not going to go wrong by picking any of the constitutions. And they're all balanced using whole foods. They support the element that they are constituted for. So um, we also came up with toppers, which are dried, small, potent options. So the, the wood topper, they come in two ounce bags, but the wood topper is more limited ingredients because it's not a complete and balanced meal. And this is, again, to support the, the wood constitution. So for this... The ingredients are beef liver, because like feeds light, we're, we're supporting the liver of the wood element, 
organic kale, organic dandelion root, organic chlorella. You heard me mention all of those things in the very beginning when I was reading out of Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs about supporting the wood personality. Um, so if you have a pet that is a that you think has a wood deficiency, uh, the wood topper would be wonderful. It also is helpful for earth excess and fire deficiency because um, wood feeds fire. So that makes sense. If all of this is confusing to you, again, you can take the pet personality quiz and it will walk you through the steps uh, with little check boxes. It makes it a lot easier, but you can also do it based on symptoms. Um, so to feed wood, you may see dampness in the lower body, edema, weakness in the back and joints. They may be seeking attention, have some gas or distension, constipation, diarrhea, obesity, stiff muscles, a lot about tendons, ligaments, joints, CCL, tears, lethargy, dry eye. In all of those cases, you would want to feed either the wood constitution or the wood constitution topper is a great place to start. If you don't want to completely change their diet, you can add this topper on top of any diet. It doesn't um, have to necessarily be the constitution diet. You can just start adding it today. The only thing with these toppers is they are very potent dried whole food powders. So we recommend starting with a really teeny tiny bit just to make sure that it is palatable and um, well received by your pet. But these can be used for cats or dogs, the little constitution toppers. If you have a pet that you believe has uh, an excess of wood. So for example, you have a pet maybe that's really aggressive. They have that, um, they have emotional outbursts, so to speak. You may need to bring down that excess wood with metal. So she describes this as, think of a metal ax that's chopping down a tree. You want to bring, bring the wood down. Um, so you might also, for some of these pets, they might have too much wood and you might need to add a little bit of metal to bring that down. So based on symptoms, um, symptoms of wood excess include digestive upset, acid reflux, um, pain between the ribs, shallow breathing, hyperactivity, frustration, anger, aggression, seizures, uh, all of those cases, you may find it more appropriate to either feed the metal constitution or use the metal topper. The metal topper is pork, pear, organic pear, organic peppermint, and organic lion's mane mushroom. So there's some nice draining options there. Uh, you would also want to feed metal in cases of dull, dulled vision, stiffness, degeneration of the discs and cartilage, uh, hind end weakness, lacking stamina, loss of appetite, pneumonia, itching, bladder weakness, incontinence, loss of body hair, cracked, dry, soft nails. We talked about that as well. Um, and having trouble with coughing or sneezing with changes of temperature and humidity. So if you want to look on the Constitution's Toppers page, it goes through some of the symptoms that you may see based on what your pet is experiencing. So you can look at those and see if one really speaks to what your pet is going through, especially if you have a wood, wood element pet. Um, but you can also just take the pet personality quiz and we'll kind of do that work for you. And it will identify your pet's personality on page one. And then page two, it goes into what might be in excess or deficient. So you can choose what you might need to add. Uh, but again, these are Dr. Judy's toppers. They're available on drjudymorgan.com. They're nice little potent toppers. You don't have to change the whole diet if you don't want to. You can just start here, see if your pet likes it. It works well with your pet. If you do want to change the diets, those are only available. The, the Constitution's diets are only available at allprovide.com. It's a frozen patty. They come in a pound each uh, for dogs only. We don't have a Constitution line for cats. Maybe that's down the road. Um, but they, these are diets for dogs only. They're complete and balanced if you want to change your pet's meals or work it into the rotation. Both wonderful options. Okay, so those are the Dr. Judy specific products that we're going to talk about. The next one, which is really wonderful for any type of liver, gallbladder, kidney issue, we use this product a lot. It's Liver Tonic by Adored Beast. 
they have also an equine liver tonic as well. So whether you have cats, dogs, horses, liver tonic is a really wonderful option. Um, and I know there's lots of people that take it too. Very simple ingredients. Um, I know it has milk thistle. Uh, barberry, milk thistle, uh, and a few other things in it. It's helpful for gallbladder, kidney, liver. And one thing that I think is important to remember when we are talking about the wood element and the, the liver specifically is that the liver is capable of regenerating, of healing, even repairing, even if it's been damaged. So in a lot of cases, we can really help the pet by just a few simple things. Uh, and liver tonic is a great example, whether your pet has seizures, eye issues, liver issues directly, or, you know, maybe early stage kidney disease, gallbladder issues. Uh, liver tonic is something that's just very gentle. It helps detoxify, helps the liver regenerate and repair. Along the same lines is just the herbal milk thistle from Solutions Pet Products. So milk thistle is in the liver tonic tincture as one ingredient. Uh, and we really love this because it's very straightforward, simple milk thistle powder. Um, nothing fancy, but it does the job. So silymarin is actually naturally occurring in milk thistle, and it's been pretty well researched as far as herbs go. It's used a lot in humans as well as animals, cats, dogs, horses. So there's quite a bit of research out there on the efficacy of milk thistle. Uh, in some countries, it's actually prescribed by practitioners, not here in the U.S., but maybe one day. Uh, it's been shown in many studies to prevent and repair liver damage, um, various liver diseases, also kidney and gallbladder, uh, and just really helpful for liver health. So whether you think your pet needs specific liver support or you just want to work into your rotation a general light detox protocol. In a perfect world, we wouldn't really need to give our pets milk thistle on a consistent basis. Unfortunately, um, over the past few thousand years, we have really polluted the planet. So whether it's air pollution, environmental pollution in their food and their water source, the cleaners that we use, air fresheners, the list goes on, unfortunately, of things that are taxing the liver of us, of our pets. Um, of those around us. So milk thistle is something in, it can be used for very specific use cases. However, if your pet um, just lives life in the environment, uh, there's a pretty high chance, unfortunately, that they've been exposed to some type of toxin. Um, and since the liver is the filtering organ, it's really going to impact the liver the most in, in many cases. So again, very simple. This is just straight milk thistle from Solutions Pet Products, uh, but it's uh, been studied many, many times over in humans and in pets for its benefits related to the liver. I mentioned briefly in the beginning the like feeds like philosophy. So we had talked about it also during our heart health awareness that we recommended feeding a lot of heart treats or, or freeze-dried heart, dried heart. If you have a pet with heart disease, same thing goes for these wood element pets. If we're supporting the liver, we can also feed liver. Something that is extremely important with liver, feeding liver and sources of liver is that it is the detoxifying organ of the animal. So you want to make sure that it is coming from a very high quality source where the animal is exposed to the least amount of toxins and pollutants as possible because uh, those can build up over time. So two options that we really like as far as liver treats go are from farmhounds. We have just straight beef liver, which you can break into small pieces. And then Green Juju has bison liver trainers, but they're just little slices of bison liver. These two companies, we feel very comfortable with their sourcing and their quality as far as ingredients go. Liver can be generally up to 10% of the diet. It's in most complete and balanced diets that we recommend. Right now, I'm feeding my pets uh, Solutions Pet Products, their frozen diets, and liver is included in all of the diets, but I still use liver treats on top of that because I'm not super worried about managing every tiny micronutrient um, and the load it has at each meal. I don't have 
complete and balanced meals every single time I feed my pets. So I really don't keep track of things like how much liver they're getting in a day between their complete and balanced diet and liver treats. Uh, I just like to give them liver treats because they are really tasty and high value rewards. So uh, if you are concerned about the amount of liver your pet is getting, maybe they have copper storage disease or they have some other consideration, um, up to 10% is generally accepted. But if you're working it in as treats or your pet has some type of, of liver issue, these are two really great options to consider, either the bison liver trainers or the beef liver from Farmhounds. Okay. Something else that is helpful for the eyes, the liver, um, and also if your, your pet is experiencing seizures, we really do like working in dark leafy greens. So some of the, um, the greens that I mentioned earlier, you can get those from the grocery store, organic preferably. Um, you can finely chop them, you can lightly saute them and give them directly to your pets if that's palatable. Uh, we also have stuff like the Just Greens blend, which they dry it so it's um, nice and easy to, to administer and not messy at all. It's really, I just sprinkle it into their food. So this is fine for cats or dogs. And uh, sometimes I get a little pushback recommending anything that is not straight meat to cats. Uh, and that, you know, their cats are carnivores. Why are you recommending a greens uh, add additive to their diet when cats are carnivores? I will argue that most people, when they're discussing cat nutrition, uh, it's a little bit of my pet peeve. They haven't actually watched cats out in the environment because if you do, <laughs> cats will eat a lot of things. They eat hundreds of varieties of different plants, flowers, fruits, mushrooms, insects, hair, feathers, feet, brains, like they eat everything. Um, so I am a firm believer with my own cats. I really like to work in a small amount of greens and mushrooms and different novel things into their diet to try to replicate what they would naturally choose uh, or healthy options that they would nat naturally choose, I should say. Uh, so I'm a big fan of adding small amounts of things like this, of greens or mushrooms to our cat's diets as well as our dog's diets. They don't necessarily easily absorb the nutrients from those things, from carbohydrates and, and greens and things like that, but they can still get some of the benefits of a lot of these. So Anyway, that's my little side note saga on cat nutrition. Uh, but the ingredients of Just Greens Blend, it's organic, all of it's organic. Zucchini, celery, kale, dandelion greens, coconut, parsley, nettles, ginger, and turmeric. A lot of things that are draining, supportive of the liver, the kidneys. Um, and it's, again, it's a really easy way to work some of those leafy greens and other, other greens that were listed into your pet's diet. This can be a topper on any type of food. They also, from Green Juju, if you have like a boutique pet store near you, they have different greens blends that are frozen. They have a few different ones with different ingredients. Um, I know they have a Bailey's blend. I think they have a frozen version of Just Greens. Uh, but a lot of wonderful benefits for working in either the frozen kind of greens or this version, the dried version of greens into your pet's diet. Um, I think for all pets, but especially our wood personality pets, the Just Greens blends is a really good fit. Okay. Use greens for your dogs and you've seen cats eat greens too. Yes. Cats will, you know, cats are pretty amazing. When you watch them in their natural habitat, they will eat grasses and herbs. And one of Judy's, uh, she has barn cats that were from this feral mom cat that just showed up and had babies in her house, literally just invited herself and had babies. Uh, so we have all sorts of, of fun interactions with these cats that are domesticated, but they came from a feral mom. So they have a lot of their instincts still intact. And I literally saw one coming into the barn with a mushroom sticking out of its mouth. And I was like, I did not think the cats would self-select mushrooms, but they legitimately will the grasses and flowers. One of them was eating a hibiscus flower off the plants. Um, and we learned from there that they're not toxic and they actually have some benefits. So uh, yeah, I think you can definitely use the Just Greens product for your cat or your dog. And it's something I'm passionate about when it comes to cat nutrition. Anyway, off of that saga. Um, lastly, the last thing in our store that I really like to add for our wood element pets um, eggs in general are a wonderful topper for those pets and really 
for pretty much all pets, uh, dogs or cats. But um, if you either don't want to or you have a really picky pet that doesn't particularly particularly like the raw egg consistency. I have a cat who uh, could really benefit from some eggs. He will not eat them anyway. He's like, Sam, I am. He does not like green eggs. No, no. Uh, he will totally turn his nose up at scrambled over easy raw eggs. Just will not have it. Some pets love it. My dogs eat them up every time I cook them uh, or they'll take them raw. They'll eat the whole shell. They'll do the whole thing. Cats, um, they're hit or miss. So I started working in the Wilderbites quail egg topper. These are whole eggs that are dried and ground up. So it includes the shell, the membrane, all the good stuff. I just sprinkle this on top of his food, mix it in. Uh, it's a really wonderful topper for cats or dogs to incorporate, especially for our wood element pets. Um, eggs are a really great topper. It doesn't have to be quail eggs specifically. So even if you just go to the grocery store and you get some eggs and you want to give your pet either raw or gently cooked eggs, those are totally fine as a topper. Uh, the egg shell, just make sure that it's not chemically sanitized, which most of the eggs that you're going to buy at the grocery store will be chemically sanitized. So we don't recommend using those shells. Uh, but if you can get farm fresh eggs or your own eggs or from a local farm that you know they're not chemically sanitizing, you can feed the entire thing. You can grind up the shell and, and give them the egg yolk, the egg white, the egg shell membrane, the whole bit. Um, but that is what this is in this little package here as a nice little topper. So if you don't want to go through the effort of cooking eggs or you like me, you have a really picky pet that just wants a different texture, a different consistency. He's never had kibble in his life, but he loves just dry, crunchy things. Um, so for this, the little sprinkles into his food, he actually really likes it. Um, I tried to save a little bit of money and do something similar with cooked eggs at home. And he said I was crazy and he would never touch that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and Wilder Bites is a really, really high quality small batch manufacturer of toppers and treats. So we have quite a few things from Wilder Bites that we really like and we use with our own pets. So those are all the products that we have in the warehouse that can help support your wood personality pet. A lot of those things are great for a variety of use cases even if your pet is not a wood personality, um, because unfortunately the world we live in can be very toxic and um, a lot of pesticides are used on our pets. So the supporting of the liver can be generally applicable to a lot of different cases, not just a pet with liver disease, for example. If you are interested in learning more about TCVM food therapy, Dr. Judy actually put together two courses on TCVM food therapy. So 101 is the introductory course. It explains what TCVM food therapy is, the um, energetics of food. So what we mean when we say this is a cooling food, this is a warming food, this is a this is a yin tonic, this is a chi tonic. Um, it explains the different properties. And then it actually summarizes some ways that you can feed your pet based on certain diseases or ailments. So that is TCVM Food Therapy 101. If you need an introduction to these concepts of food therapy and you want to know how to apply them for specific disease states, that's a wonderful course you can take. After you complete 101, you can move on to 201, TCVM Food Therapy 201. Um, that goes into how to actually balance the diet using um, making sure you hit the appropriate vitamins, minerals, proteins, fats, carbs, um, and also how to feed based on the different personalities, the five different personalities. So depending on what kind of situation you are working with, if you just have a personal pet with a specific ailment and you just want to know how to best feed them using food therapy, you may only need to um, look into just food therapy 101. If you are somebody that works with other pets, or you have a variety of pets with a variety of personalities, the capstone, which is 101 plus 201, may be a better fit for you just because it is definitely a much more complete education on TCVM food therapy and how to apply it to a RAIN case. Um, and again, both of those, um, a lot of the same material is covered in Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs, the book, which you can get on drchimorin.com 
or on Amazon. Uh, the courses are a little bit more in depth um, and I think engaging than the book, but the book is also a wonderful resource that has tons of information in it. Really helpful for any pet that you have, um, cat or dog really. But it is specifically for, written for dogs and the recipes are for dogs in Yin Yang Nutrition. Okay, I think that's it. Just a short 30 minutes of talking. Uh, everything that I mentioned is at drjeanmorin.com. So if I did not answer your question or you needed more information, make sure to check out each listing, read through it. If you're still not, still not sure, you can submit an email, info at drjeanmorin.com. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions that you may have. Um, but I think that's it for today. So this was supporting the wood element pet. And we'll be back next month. We've got some new products that are going to be onboarded. So next month for our What's in the Warehouse, we're going to be introducing some new things, which will be exciting. We haven't done that in a while. All right, everybody have a great rest of your day.